Hey guys, welcome back to Cascore Tech. My name's Garrett, and today I am bringing you our first looks at the Prusa Mark III. That's right, we were among the very first to get these printers, and we bought it with our own money, so um, all the opinions expressed here are completely my own, and I'm not being paid by anyone to do this video. And I should also mention that this is not a full review. This is just the first looks at the printer. Um, we've only had it up and running for about two days, so I just wanted to get a video out showing you guys how cool this thing is and um, just showing off some of the experiences we've had already with it. But I will be doing a full review of this machine at some point in the future once I've had more time to fully test out all the features and uh, form my opinion around it. So we got this kit over the weekend and Chelsea actually put this together completely by herself. I was in the room, we actually live streamed it on Twitch, um, so the chat was joining in and everything, but Chelsea was the one who put everything together. She followed all the instructions, all I did was just hand her the occasional tool. And this was her first kit ever, she did help me put together the um, multi-material upgrade for the Mark II, but aside from that she has had no kit experience with 3D printers. The whole thing took roughly 11 to 12 hours for her to complete. We streamed it over two days over on Twitch. Um, the videos are still actually up there over on Twitch. I'll put a link to our channel down below so you can go watch those in full if you'd like. But I think that really speaks to how well the instructions are put together because it's definitely not an easy thing assembling a kit completely from scratch and wiring up all the electronics and stuff like that. So one, good on Prusa for making sure that the instructions were easy to follow. There were a few hiccups, but we could get through them pretty easily. And then two, I'm extremely proud of Chelsea for putting this together herself. It's been running flawlessly. So now that it's completely together and we've gotten a few test prints off of it, the first thing that strikes me is how quiet it is. Um, it's running right next to me. I've got a mic right here. And I'm sure you guys can hear it a little bit, but it is super quiet. And I've had quiet printers before. I've also had very loud printers. This thing is in a new league. Like, we will just be um, a couple feet away. I'll be standing in the doorway right over there, and this room will be dark, and I actually don't know if it's printing until it makes a major move. And on some prints, it doesn't make those types of moves at all so I actually have to turn the light on and visually confirm that it's still printing it's very jarring but it's very very cool and even at very fast speeds this thing is not very loud at all I'll actually put up some decibel readings now this is just an app on my phone so I'm not sure how accurate it is but it will give you an idea of how it compares to some of the other printers so here are the results on the screen you can see that it is comparing the mark 3 to the mark 2 s and also to my CR 10 so you can see that the mark 3 is vastly quieter and just because I think it's funny, um, here is a measurement of our Robo R2, completely turned off, not even on, no fans running, completely turned off. This is just the noise from the power brick, which is incredibly loud. This thing turned off is louder than the Mark III. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering how this thing stacks up to the Mark II or the Mark II S and what's sort of different about it. And I do own a Mark II S. We didn't buy it as a kit though. We bought it assembled and then later we upgraded it to the multi-material. But from what I can tell, the assemblies of both of these machines are very similar. So if you've put together a Mark II kit, um, you should know pretty much what you're in for putting this thing together. And if you've never put a kit together before, you should still have a pretty decent time doing it. You can actually go to the Prusa website right now and look up the instructions for how to do this. It's not very daunting at all. So it does share a lot of similarities with the Mark II and the Mark II S, but there are a few things that really stand out as different, and they're extremely cool features. So the first is that the bed is removable. It's actually a flex plate that is attached with magnets, so you just kind of like set it on there, it snaps into place, and then when the print's done and it's cooled down, you can take it off and flex to get the part to pop off. It's extremely cool and very handy. I'm very glad they added this feature. And then the next features I'm going to talk about are mostly sensors or detectors of some kind to help make sure that the prints finish successfully no matter what happens. And there are three main ones, and I've tested them out so far. So the first is power failure recovery. So Prusa actually figured out a way to store enough energy inside the capacitors that if the power is just completely cut off, it has enough juice left in it to um, stop extruding, retract a little bit, and record the position that it's in. And I've even heard some people say that it can home off to the side so it gets away from the printer, but in my experiences it didn't have quite enough juice to do that, so it just kind of stopped where it was. But it was able to recover and start up without any issue. So basically what happened was, to, in order to test this out, I just pulled the plug from the wall. And sure enough, it stopped right there. And then when I plugged it back in, on the screen it just says recovery print, 
and then it says it starts heating up to make sure that it's at the right temperatures again and once it's heated up it just goes back to the last position it was at starts extruding again and it's on its way. Now I've tested this out on three separate occasions and all of them have started again flawlessly. And only on one of them was there even slightly a visible scar. And this was so minor it could have been passed off as just a weird blob on the layer. So I'm extremely happy about that and it pretty much alleviates the need to worry about a power flicker or power outages or anything like that. The next one is a filament sensor so ideally if the filament runs out or gets cut off for some reason, it will detect when it's out and pause to give you enough time to swap out for new filament and stuff like that. I have not had very much luck with this. I don't know if I'm testing it in the wrong way. I just snipped the um, filament right at the top and it just kind of kept extruding and didn't stop or anything like that. You can actually see on this vase here, I'll put some close-ups, but there's a ring around the top where I tried to do this and it just didn't detect and kept trying to extrude with no plastic. I did eventually force the plastic back in there so it finished, but there's a very noticeable ring here where it was not extruding properly. So I'm going to continue to test that and see what kind of results I get. I'll make sure to record all of my tests with this and uh, present them in the full review. And the next one I think is the coolest in my opinion. It actually has a layer shift detection. Now this one I also had mixed results in. I have had it succeed a couple times and I've also had it fail once. So I will show you a little clip here. This was actually from our uh, live stream of the build of this. We were testing it. So basically what I did to test this was kind of punch the printer. More accurately I just held my hand there to stop the extruder from moving. So this is one of the clips of it succeeding. You can see that as soon as I block it, it detects it and moves out of the way immediately and then um, tries to reposition and recover the print. And it did so flawlessly. Now we tried to do this again and this time I actually gave it a little bit of a push. I didn't just leave my hand there um, and it did not detect it and just kept printing, shifted several centimeters off of the print. So I would say I got mixed results there, but like I said with the last one, I will continue to test and let you guys know what I come up with in the final video. All right, and then to close out this video, I'm just gonna show some of the prints we've got. Uh, most of these printed phenomenally. Chelsea took the proper steps and time to dial in the uh, bed level and everything like that. So these prints came out great. The first layers look great. The only issues you can see is the one I mentioned previously on the vase where I tried the filament detection thing and it didn't work. And also this dragon here uh, does not look great because we actually had one of the screws kind of wiggle loose and that caused the print to be messy, but it still did finish and then Chelsea was able to fix that up and we haven't had any issues since then. So if you wanna know more about this printer, I'll put a link to their website right down below where you can see all of the new features and stuff like that. Like I said, I am not um, supported by or affiliated with Prusa in any way. I just genuinely like these printers. We bought them all with our own money. And I'm excited to keep using this printer. So um, you'll definitely see this printer in some of my upcoming videos and probably well into the future. All right, guys. Well, I hope you found this video interesting or at least got a little bit of info out of it. Let me know down in the comments. Are you going to get one of these? Have you got one of these already? But let me know what you think about this down in the comments. All right, guys. That's it for me. And until next time, keep creating.